Hello and welcome back to the Set Design Channel. Uh, today we are talking stage plans. Stage plans are incredibly important to any film or television production, as it lets your construction crew know where to position the set in the stage, and also lets the film crew know what to expect on the day of the shoot. So today we're going to make one from the model we made in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video and you'd like to be brought back up to speed, uh, there's a link somewhere on the screen and in the description uh, to go and watch that. Um, but without any further ado, let's crack on. So what we're going to do on this video is we're going to take the model we've already made of our vault set and we're going to take that into Vectorworks and make a scale plan. Vectorworks is a fully fledged building information modeling software with a whole host of tools for extrapolating plans and elevations from 3D models. This is something we'd like to explore in a later video. However, for this video, we're going to stick to two dimensional tools and draw a basic stage plan. Uh, hopefully you can learn a few things along the way. Um, what I'm hoping is that the methods I'm going to be using in this video um, can be transferred to other CAD softwares as well. So I hope you find it useful. Similar to the previous video, I will be using quite a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so I won't go through them all here, but if you want to learn them, I will put the link in the description to where you can find the sheet of shortcuts for Vectorworks, much like the SketchUp shortcuts in the last video. One quick note is that SketchUp and Vectorworks do share a couple of core functions just under different names. For instance, components in SketchUp are referred to as symbols in Vectorworks and tags in SketchUp are referred to as classes in Vectorworks. There are slight differences in the way they work, but they are fundamentally very similar in practice. So we have our initial design of the set and we've had our meeting with the producers and the director and we've assessed that all of our action happens within these two rooms on the ground floor. Uh, for that reason, what we're going to do is we are going to focus on the ground floor part of this set uh, and we will do everything from that balcony level upwards in green screen. Now that has been decided, uh, I've taken everything from above that level, from above the balcony, and I've grouped it into a tab called Hidden. Uh, this allows me to turn the visibility on and off of all those items. Uh, using tabs is a great way of keeping track of all your items in a model. It's a great way of being able to flick between different states of your set, basically. I add a cross-section plane and I face it downwards and I lower it to an appropriate part of the set where I want our plan to effectively work. Um, it is said that a floor plan should usually resemble a cross section of a room at about three foot in height. Now, this is a rule of thumb. And generally speaking, what I'd suggest is that you always sort of try and place your cross section at your openings and windows widest points. Um, so this, you know, there's a bit of give and take there. So with this in mind, what we'll do is we will level the cross-section plane to sit at exactly halfway down the circular vault door. And this allows us to have the widest opening for at least that section, the most important section. So from here, I switch to our top-down view and I set it to parallel projection. Now, this is incredibly important because if you leave it on perspective mode, it means that nothing you export will be to scale. You need to set it to parallel projection. This gets rid of the perspective warping and it allows you to just export a flat cross section. With all this done, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to save this as a .dwg. So we're going to export this and let's just make sure that it's set to full scale and that our dimensions are set to millimeters. With this part done, we're going to move over to our CAD software of choice. Now, I am aware that SketchUp Pro comes with the layout package, which can be very handy for doing technical drawings. Um, I personally find it quite limiting in terms of the control that you have and the tools that are available. My CAD software of choice is Vectorworks, and I am using the Spotlight package. Vectorworks has long been a go-to for the entertainment industry. The Spotlight version in particular comes with a number of tools that are specifically made for film, TV, and events. It also works as a planning tool for lighting directors for uh, large studio and uh, stadium-based performance events. However, that can all get very advanced, and we're not going into that side of things on this video. Um, today, we are keeping it very straightforward, and we are talking plans. We open up Vectorworks, and we start a new file. Now, before we get any further, I just want to cover some very basic stuff in how drawing in Vectorworks is done. You'll see me flicking between my sheet layer and my design layer using the drop-down up here. The sheet layer is always kept at full scale and acts as our finished page. This page is strictly for borders, title blocks, and notes. Everything will actually get drawn on the design layers and displayed 
on the sheet layer using what's called a viewport. You can either switch between your active layers and classes in the drop down menus up here in the taskbar or in the management panel on the right. One very important thing that you might have missing on your workspace is the scale menu. Now, uh, to activate that, you've got to click this little button in the top corner and click on layer scale to make it visible. Um, so this is quite important for your design layers and setting the scale you want to work at. Interest of saving time, I generally start my projects from a template I have previously set up. Uh, I recommend that you set up a simple title block for your projects and save that as a template, which is very easy to do. You just go to File, Save as Template, give it a name. I like to keep my title blocks fairly simple. So the information I like to always have in my drawings is as follows. I tend to keep the production title, the production designer's name, the set title, the drawing title, a drawing number, a stage slash location, um, the drawing scale, and of course the name of the draft person drawing it. As you begin to work on larger productions, you'll want to add more specifics, but for now this does the job and it will get you started. So generally speaking for my templates, uh, my preferred size is A1 and landscape orientation. The reason I like A1 is generally speaking, there is a wide availability of print shops that can print at that size. It is also directly scalable with A3, which means that you can print it on that office printer they use on every single production and you can scale the drawing quite easily to fit that. So do take some time to make yourself a nice little title block. Uh, they're very simple, just using rectangles, lines and text and uh, take the time to save it as a template and that will save you just that little bit of time every time you start up a project, it's, it's there. So, you know, it took me long enough to learn to do that. Now, on to importing that CAD file we exported from SketchUp. Do you remember that? So we're going to import that cross section we exported from SketchUp into Vectorworks by clicking on File, Import, and we're going to go and find that file in our folder. More recent versions of Vectorworks have a native import SketchUp function, which imports a model from SketchUp into Vectorworks and converts all of the features into architectural components. Sadly, this feature is not on all versions of Vectorworks. The fundamentals package in particular does not include it, and for this reason, we're going to do a straightforward CAD import. Once it has been imported, I will highlight the whole thing and just turn it into a group, pressing Control G. So to get our drawings on our design layers to show up on our sheet, we need to create a viewport. To do this, we click on View and Create Viewport and select the correct sheet layer here. Now, all the changes you make in the design layer will update automatically onto your sheet. You can adjust things like the scale of your viewport in the Properties tab on the right. When you've imported something from SketchUp into Vectorworks or sent anything from one CAD software over to the other, just make sure that the scale is correct. So go from your previous model in SketchUp, check a few key dimensions with the Line tool or the Tape Measure tool, and then go through to Vectorworks and just double check that those are correct in the Vectorworks version as well. It's very important. Uh, it can be very easy for the scale to go off a bit and you think you're fine space-wise and terrible things can happen. So just make sure that your scale is correct and what you've drawn is correctly showing in Vectorworks and is accurate to what you had modeled in the first place in SketchUp. Now, our plan is a little bit useless without a stage in which to plot our set. So our producers have been calling around for a available stage, uh, which in London is no mean feat, but they have found that luckily Duke's Island Studios is available. So we're going there. So with our stage chosen, we need to have a look at fitting our set into that space. To do this, I've downloaded the existing stage plan off of their website. Now, uh, most studios will generally have their plans available online. If not, some of them, you can call them up and get them to email them over to you. But generally speaking, most existing studios will have an existing stage plan and usually in CAD format, which is very handy for us. Much like the cross section, we import the .dwg file into Vectorworks and it will appear in its own layer. Make sure this layer is set to the same scale as your cross section. You can do that with the drop-down menu up here. I like to use scales of 1 to 25, 1 to 50, and 1 to 100 generally, uh, reason being that they are very common scales to be found on scale rules as well as being very easily divisible into each other. Also, always write down the paper size of your plan uh, that it's designed for. It's something which gets forgotten about very regularly. A scale isn't much use without someone knowing what size it's supposed to be in the first place. So just make sure that you have that bit of information somewhere. 
Now we're going to reformat the plan drawing from the CAD geometry. So a really fun thing about importing things from SketchUp is that it will import as a bunch of disjointed lines and all the shapes will be just loose lines that then we've got to trace over again to make sense of it all. So the first thing I need to get on with is tracing over all the shapes in the polygon tool. I generally like to have uh, a good thick line showing the finished clad side of a wall that's going to be seen on camera. And then I tend to leave the backs of those walls just greyed out to show that they're just going to be open setbacking. You can set up classes to have their own attributes, meaning that you can adjust things like line thicknesses and colours and hatches automatically without having to select everything and then change them manually. It's best to get into this practice as soon as you can, just because it will save you a lot of time in the long run. We also add dotted arcs on the floor to illustrate how each door opens and we adjust the thickness and visibility of all the detail lines to suit their prominence. Generally good to have these nice thick lines that show a finished set wall. And keep that in mind when you're drawing plans in general that all the line thicknesses are quite important to the prominence of what they're resembling. So walls are often very thick and then you've got overhead rigging which is usually quite faint just to show that it's above and out the way. And then any pieces of dressing, you know, just a nice sort of solid black line but doesn't have to be as thick as a wall for instance. So now we have a plan, this is visually clear, it's appealing to look at and our set fits in the space, this is all great. However we want to double check that what we've drawn is accurate to the real world, so to do that it's always good to make a visit to the site before you commit to an expensive set build. So let's go and do that. Okay so we're coming to do a visit to the stage here at Duke's Island Studios, we are in green stage and there's a few things that we want to look through and check before we commit to our stage plan. Do a quick check of the overall measurements of the stage, just to make sure that they line up with what is on the existing plan. Check any existing lighting grid. You want to make sure that it's in the exact position it is on the existing plan, and you want to get a measurement to the underside of it. Make note of any features that may eat into your usual flat floor space. For instance, here we have an infinity cove. Power outlets, very important. So you want to talk to your gaffer to make sure that you're not blocking it with anything you're building and also that you have a clear thoroughfare for any cable runs required for your set. Make sure you keep a four foot fire lane around all walls of the studio. That's 1.22 meters. Access doors. You wanna make sure that you're not building anything that's blocking access to the stage. And this becomes doubly important when talking about emergency exits. Try and work with whatever features your stage comes with. For instance, this infinity cove can be painted green reducing the need for us to install drapes. Make the most of your time when you're doing any kind of site visit. Take measurements, take photographs, and take notes of any information that will possibly be of use later. Time is often your most precious resource in the entertainment industry, so you don't want to have to make any repeat visits. And with that, back to the office. Thank you so much to Duke's Island Studios for letting us go and film over in their stage. With the stage visit done, we then go and check through our plan for any discrepancies. If that's all fine, we then continue to add any relevant notes. I've changed the colour of the Infinity Cove, or Psych as some people call it, to green to make it clear that we're going to paint that green. I've also drawn a wiggly line down the other side to show that we are going to install our own green drapes on this side of the set. It's usually good to ask other departments such as lighting and camera about what they require out of this set too, just so you can sort of space out where cables need to go, for instance. Areas are marked out with dotted lines to show where each department is going to be situated. It's best to get the on the plan early and discuss it with different departments uh, so that it avoids fights on the loading. Joking aside, it is always important to remember that the stage plans are there for all crew members to see, not just the art department. So it's important to have all the information on there. But among other things, your director is going to want to use this plan for plotting out the scenes and where the actors are going to stand and camera positions. And your gaffer is probably going to want to use it to make their own lighting plans. So just make everything as clear as possible and don't cluster the inside of your set and try and keep your notes outside of the usual area of that plan. 
So after all of that, I add a few important notes, some overall dimensions to the set and the stage itself, and also the gap between the set and the wall, which is very useful. And I adjust the layout a little bit, give it a few tweaks, just make sure that everything is nice and visually pleasing. And uh, hey presto, we've got a functioning stage plan. All that's left to do is export it to a file that people can open without a £3,000 piece of CAD software. So we go to File, Export, save it as a PDF, uh, check the PDF, open it up, make sure it doesn't take up too much memory. I mean, the PDFs can be a bit odd. Sometimes they export and they'll be 50 kilobytes, sometimes they'll be three megabytes. So you just wanna make sure that nothing weird has happened in the export. And uh, yeah, you've got something that could be sent through to the production team after sign off by the production designer. And that is it. We have a stage plan that can be sent out to people. It is to scale. It is accurate to the stage we're going to be filming in. It's easily readable, it is clear, visually pleasing, and also in a CAD format that can be altered if need be, if some last minute changes are going to happen before the day of the shoot. Um, it's so important to have these so that the crew knows what they're walking into on the day of the shoot. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found that interesting and useful. If uh, you have any feedback to leave, please leave a comment. Um, leave us a like if you enjoyed it and please consider subscribing and I hope to see you back here soon for some future videos on the Set Design channel. Thank you very much. Bye.